Auzu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, I hope you all are fine and in the best conditions of your health. So today, in connection with the online lecture in the course of Fundamentals of Organic Chemistry, we will consider the chapter of alcohols, phenols, and ethers, and we will discuss about the properties and preparation of phenols. The key concepts which we will discuss today will be about the structures of phenol, then how we can classify phenols, also since it's very important to discuss about the acidity of phenols, so we will compare the acidity of phenols and alcohols. Also we will consider about how we can prepare phenols. So we will consider the preparation of phenols on a laboratory scale only. Okay, phenols. So phenols are actually hydroxybenzene, if you can say. So if we have a OH group, a hydroxy group that's attached to a benzene, then such function, such organic compounds are called phenols, right? And phenols are formed when one of the hydrogen or more than one of hydrogen of an aromatic hydrocarbon is replaced by an OH group. So just replacement of a hydrogen with hydroxy group leads to formation of hydroxybenzene which are commonly known as phenols. So we can represent phenols as C6H5OH right? or instead of writing C6H5 we can simply write PH P stands for phenyl, means a benzene, and OH stands for hydroxy group. So if a single OH is attached to a phenyl group, it means a benzene group, then such is the example of a simplest phenol. So phenol is also a common name as well as IUPAC name. So both are accepted by common name system as well as IUPAC name system. So as far as the structure of phenol is concerned, right, so phenols are simple phenol, it's based on a benzene ring, right, and we have a hydroxy attached to that. But suppose if we have more than one substituent attached on it, then it becomes necessary what is the relative position of the substituents. Right, so if you have only one OH group attached to a benzene ring, it is not important to specify which carbon uh, hydroxy is attached to. Because all the carbons on benzene ring are exactly the same, they are equivalent. However, if there are more than one substituent attached on the benzene ring, then relative position of the substituent in the substituted phenols becomes important. So the relative position of the substituent is described in terms of ortho, meta, and para. Right? So if two substituents are placed or present at one two position, for example, if a substituent is present on a carbon and the next substituent is present on the adjacent carbon, then the relationship is ortho. However, if two substituents are present at carbon number 1 and carbon number 3, then such substituents are said to be meta to each other. Right? However, if a substituent is present at position 1 and another is present at position number 4, then the relationship will be para to each other. Right? So, ortho, actually, ortho describes that the substituents are one, two, that substituted. Meta means that relationship is one, three, while para means the relationship is one, four. Right? So, as far as the classification of phenol is concerned, phenols are normally classified as monohydric alcohols, sorry, monohydric phenols, dihydric phenols, trihydric phenols, and polyhydric phenols depending on whether they contain one, two, 
3 or many hydroxy groups, for example. So this is the simplest phenol. All right, so it has only one OH group, so it means that's monohydrate. So this phenol, also it's a phenol, but it has two hydroxy groups, so it's a dihydrate. So if you want to see the relationship, you can see that one hydroxy is carbon 1 and the other is on carbon number 2. So the relationship is 1, 2, so we say these two hydroxy are ortho to each other. Right? So third phenol, which we are seeing here, it has three hydroxy groups. Right? So it means that's a trihydroxy group. That's a trihydric phenol. So if you want to see the relationship, so there are two types of relationships that are existing in this specific phenol. So this hydroxy and this hydroxy, these are relative to each other by one four position. So it's this carbon, this hydroxy is at carbon number one, while this hydroxy is at carbon number four. You can count that one, two, three, four. So these hydroxies, these two hydroxies, they are para to each other because they have one for relationship. Now, if you want to see relationship between this hydroxy and that hydroxy, then in that case you can see one, two, three. So these two hydroxies are one, three to each other. So these are meta to each other. However, these two hydroxies, these are one, two. They are having one, two relationship, so they are ortho to each other. See? So here in this compound we have two hydroxy which are para to each other these two hydroxies are meta to each other and these two hydroxies are ortho to each other you must always remember that ortho, para, meta they are relative positions right so this is ortho with respect to that but this is para with respect to that similarly this is ortho with respect to this hydroxy but this is meta in reference to this hydroxy group so ortho meta para all of these are just relative positions okay so we have different type of phenols and we say what are the common names and what are the IUPAC name firstly we have hydroxybenzene so common name is phenol and IUPAC is phenol as well right so suppose we have here is a methyl group and a hydroxy group right so this is a phenol and it is substituted with a methyl group the common name for this phenol this substituted phenol is ortocrisol right so when a methyl is at ortho position the one to relationship this is called ortocrisol so ortho is normally abbreviated as o and it's written as italic. Further, you must write the O in a lower subscript, in a lower font, lower caps, right? You cannot write it in capital form. So this is orthocrisol, and the IUPAC name for that is 2-methylphenol, because methyl is at carbon number 2 with respect to the phenol, right? We have to give preference to the phenol so the group which is given the preference always from the root name right the last part of the name the last part of the IUPAC name is called the root name so in case of phenol the root name will be phenol right and the substitute will be right, written before the parent name so in this specific case the IUPAC name will be 2 methyl phenol now we have this phenol you can see so so this methyl and this hydroxy are meta to each other because they are having one, two, three. They're having one, three relationship, right? So the substituent which are having one, three relationship, they're called meta substituent. So this phenol is called meta chrysol. And the IUPAC name will be, so phenol will form the root name. So it will form the last part of the IUPAC name, right? And substituent will proceed before that. So we have to specify the position. So this is 3-methylphenol. Okay, so next we have here. Now we have a methyl and a hydroxy group. Now the relationship is 1-4. So they are better to each other. 
So this phenol will be called terracrisol. And the IUPAC name for that will be 4 methyl phenol. Right, so we have now so we have now two substances and both of these are hydroxy groups. Right? So common name for that is catechol. Right? So when two hydroxy are present on benzene ring and both are ortho to each other, so the common name for this is called catechol. Right? And the IUPAC name for that will be different now. So the root name will be all. So if you have two alls, we will write di all. If you have three alls, we will write tri all. And the name will start with benzene. All right. So we, the name for this structure, catechol, will be benzene. Then we will specify one, two, because the hydroxy are at one end to position. And then we will end with di all. Right, the so IUPAC name will be for that, it will be benzene 1, 2, dipole. So always remember that there is a hyphen between number and name, and there's always a comma between numbers. So we'll write benzene, a hyphen, 1, comma, 2, then since again there is space between number and name, so we'll again place a hyphen here. So benzene hyphen one two hyphen diol. So this is the IUPAC name for this structure. Now we have two hydroxies on the benzene ring, and the relative position is meta because when they are at one and three position, the common name for this structure is resorcinol, right? And the IUPAC name for that will be so we'll again write benzene in the start, then a hyphen. Then position of the two substrates that's one comma three, then again hyphen and dio because we have two hydroxy here. Then lastly we have two hydroxies and they are at mara position. Sorry, they are at para position. So the relative position is one four. So the common name is quinol or hydroquinone. Right? So it is known by both of these names. You may call it as hydroquinone or you may call it as quinol. Right? This is a common name and the IUPAC name will be benzene, then hyphen, then in relative position that's one, comma four, comma dio. So this is how we name the phenols. Okay now we'll discuss how we can prepare phenols. Right. So we'll, as mentioned earlier, we'll only discuss how we can prepare phenols in a laboratory. So we can prepare phenols from haloarenes. So aromatic compounds are also known as arenes, right? So suppose we have chlorobenzene. So this is a haloarene because halo means halogen. We have a chlorine and halogen here. And since we have aromatic ring of benzene ring, so that's why in general such is called haloarenes. So suppose we have a chlorobenzene here, if somehow we can replace the chlorine with an OH group, we can convert this chlorobenzene into phenol, right? So for doing so, what we do is that we treat this chlorobenzene with sodium hydroxide, right? And the conditions are such that we maintain a temperature of 623 Kelvin, right? And we make use of high pressure, and we make use of pressure that is equal to 300 atm atmosphere, right? So under high pressure and at high temperature conditions, what we do is that this hydroxide. Right, so this hydroxide, what it does is that this hydroxide, right, this is negatively charged actually. So this hydroxide will attack on this carbon. Right, why is attacking on that carbon? Because carbon is deficient because of presence of this chlorine. Right, so what it does is that it attacks on this carbon and chlorine leaves. 
why chlorine leaves because now chlorine if leaves it will leave with its electron pair right so when chlorine leaves with electron pair it will form Cl negative so chlorine will have negative charge it means the octet is complete now so it's easier for the chlorine to leave in the form of negative charge so hydroxide will attack here and chlorine will leave like this one so initially we will start here is that there will be an OH group attached right so suppose we have AH attached here and when an H is attached there will be no sodium but this chlorine negative what will it will do so once it leaves this chlorine when it leaves this chlorine will pick up this proton right so once it will pick up this proton right so now oxygen has no proton left so oxygen will have negative charge and the sodium that was present here okay so sodium with positive charge okay this this is countering that negative charge this is neutralizing that negative charge right so there is sort of ionic bond between oxygen and sodium that's what we'll do what we'll do is that this HCl that will be produced by combination of this H and Cl this will react with sodium phenoxide right so this ion with negative charge and a sodium attached this is called phenoxide right so this is called it's called phenoxide right so this is called phenoxide and here right so this will be just an acid base reaction so if you know about the general reaction that whenever a salt reacts with an acid we get another salt plus acid right so if you can see this phenoxide is actually a salt and we are reacting the salt with an acid which is HCl so we get this one in acid and along with that we will get a salt and what will be the salt? salt will be NaCl right, so this is the general reaction so what will be the general reaction is that the general reaction is that we have a chlorobenzene and the reaction of this chlorobenzene with sodium hydroxide will result in formation of this phenoxide ion and the reaction is done at high temperature in high pressure all right so this phenoxide ion then it will react with hcl to form phenol right so in general since sodium is just present in the medium but it's not taking part in any reaction right so since sodium is present in the reaction but it's not taking part in the reaction sodium is said to be a spec spectator ion right so those ions which are present in the reaction medium but they don't take part in the reaction such ions are called spectator ions so in this specific case sodium hydroxide sorry the sodium is a spectator ion Okay, so next we can prepare phenols from benzene sulfonic acid. Okay, so what we do is that firstly we will attach a sulfonyl group here. Okay, so this group is called sulfonyl group. This SO3H group. Okay, this is called sulfonyl group or sulfonic acid group right so this group is called benzene sulfonic acid right so firstly we convert benzene into sulfonic acid 
Then when we treat the sulfonic acid with sodium hydroxide, followed by treatment with H positive. H positive means that's an acid, right? So reaction of sulfonic acid with sodium hydroxide, followed by treatment with an acid, will result in formation of phenol, right? So it's important first to know that how we can convert this benzene into sulfonic acid. For that purpose, we use oleum, right? So oleum is also called fuming sulfuric acid. Right? So oleum is also called fuming sulfuric acid and its formula is H2S2O7. And for better understanding, you may say that actually this is H2 SO4 with sulfur trioxide gas. So this is oleum. You may call it as fuming sulfuric acid, formula H2S2O7, or you may say if you can write the expanded formula that is actually sulfuric acid with sulfur trioxide gas trapped. Right, so what we do is that we react this benzene with this oleum, right, and we get this sulfonyl group, benzene sulfonic acid. So benzene sulfonic acid first formed will be reacted with sodium hydroxide. So what is the purpose of sodium hydroxide? Is that the sodium hydroxide, this OH negative, will attack on this carbon and result in a loss of sulfonyl group. Right here we are not discussing the exact mechanism. Actually, so this hydroxide group will attack and will result in a loss of this sulfonyl group. All right, so firstly we will form the phenoxide ion and then upon reaction with this acid, we will get the phenoxide ion into phenol. Right? So this is the acidification of sodium salt will give the phenol. Right? So one thing important in this reaction is that we use sodium hydroxide in molten state, not in solution form. Right? So if you use solution form, reaction doesn't well work well. So we have to make use of molten sodium hydroxide. We have to use sodium hydroxide and then melt it. And in molten form, with in, in, not in solution form, this reaction will occur. So this is important for you to note. Okay. So another way in which we can prepare the phenols. So we can prepare phenols from diazonium salts. So diamine 2, azo means nitrogen. So whenever anything, any name ends with E-M, I-U-M, right? Always remember it means there is positive charge on the atom. So since azo means nitrogen, so di means 2, azo means nitrogen, and E-M means positive charge. So we have two nitrogens. They are attached to each other, and nitrogen is having a positive charge. Right? So when two nitrogens are attached with each other and we are having a positive charge on the nitrogen, such salts are called diazonium salts. Right? So you may write them as nitrogen. So you, you have two nitrogens here. See? And suppose we are having two nitrogens, they are bonded. And this nitrogen is bonded with someone else. So this nitrogen will have a positive charge here. Right? So since they are positive charge, in order to neutralize this positive charge, we must have some negative charge. So negative charge is normally some halogen. So suppose we have a chlorine here. Right? So this salt is with two nitrogens, mean that azo, and positive charge on nitrogen. That explains the EM. And this is neutralized by a negative charge, suppose a chlorine. So such are all called diazonium salts. Right, so diazonium salts are normally written as N2 because they are two nitrogens and Cl, suppose we have a Cl here 
and we have positive charge on nitrogen and a negative charge on Cl, right? So diazonium salts are normally written like that. Right, so diazonium salt can be prepared when we have a primary amine, which is aromatic amine, and when we react this primary aromatic amine with nitrous acid. So what's nitric acid? So nitrous acid is actually H and O2, right? So this H and O2, this is called nitrous acid. And nitrous acid cannot be stored, it has to be produced during the reaction, right? So nitrous acid can be produced when we react sodium nitrite, right? This is sodium nitrite, NaNO2. So when we treat sodium nitrite with HCl at room temperature approximately, then we get this nitrous acid, right? So reaction of this nitrous acid with a primary aromatic amine so this is a primary amine and since it's attached to benzene so this is primary aromatic amine right so we get a diazonium salt here next what we do is that we use water here so water has lone pairs of electrons right so water will attack on this carbon here right and this and two group will leave this one right so you can see that nitrogen has lost so this nitrogen will be evolved as nitrogen gas we'll get OH here and the CL actually we get firstly a water here it's not OH simply so since oxygen is positively charged positive charge on electronegative atom is not stable so what we get is that a positive charge on nitrogen, oh sorry, on oxygen. So the chlorine that was here, that was previously part of diazonium salt, so this chlorine will pick up this proton, right? So we'll form a HCl bond. So we have HCl here, and we will get a phenol here. So this is the reaction that we can prepare phenols starting from primary aromatic amines reaction of these aromatic amines by nitrous acid will convert them into benzene diazonium salt in this specific case this is benzene diazonium chloride and treatment of the salt with water in warm conditions we have to warm, use warm water so under these conditions we will get a phenol from a diazonium salt. So we can also prepare phenols from cumene. So what does we have cumene? Cumene is actually isopropyl benzene. Right, so we have a benzene and we are having an isopropyl group. So this is an isopropyl group attached here. Right, so isopropyl benzene is called cumene. Right, so what we do is that we treat iso this cumene, isopropyl benzene, with oxygen in presence of air. Right, so what we do is that we take cumene and expose it in open air. So, what happens that this oxygen will insert in this carbon and hydrogen bond. Right, so this oxygen will insert into carbon and hydrogen bond. What do we do here? Everything is same, just we have this oxygen which has been inserted into this carbon and hydrogen bond. Right, so this is the peroxide. Whenever there is oxygen oxygen single bond in a molecule, always that's called a peroxide. Right, so what we call is a cumene hydroperoxide. Right. And what we do is that at this position we add acid in presence of water what the acid does is that some sort of rearrangement reaction here 
So this OH in presence of acid will attack here, right? Acid will attach, this proton will get attached to this proton, right? So what happens is that, so hydroxide is attacked here and this group will leave like that. So we have a ketone here that has been so ketone is formed actually by elimination of this group you can see here All right so if you just add a double bond here so this is a ketone this is acetone and what has happened this hydroxide has attacked on this carbon and this ketone group has leave so this is a phenol which was our targeted product and this is the acetone Okay, which is obtained as a side product of this red. So, so far we have discussed about how we name the phenols, what are various type of phenols, why we use, why we make use of ordo, para and meta terms, how we can prepare phenols. So now we will consider acidity, since alcohols and phenols are very close to each other because there is just the change of an alkyl group or a benzene ring. So if, if an OH is attached to alkyl group, that's called alcohol. But when an OH is attached to benzene ring, that's called a phenol. That's just the difference in the nature of our group that's attached. So we will here compare the acidity of phenols and alcohol and we say, and we'll see that what is the effect of acidity on properties. Right, so firstly we will discuss about the acidity of alcohols. Right, so why what's called an acid? Acid is any species here we'll use the general concept, any species that can donate a proton. Right, any species that can give up a proton will be called an acid. So alcohols are acidic due to presence of this OH bond. Right? So the ease with which an alcohol can give this proton will be its acidity. Alright, we can see that the alcohol can donate the proton, it will be proton acidic. So we'll see about what effects, what factors increase the acidity of alcohols. Alright, any group which is electron donating or electron releasing, it will do whatever. It will increase electronic density in oxygen. Let's see here. So suppose we have an R group. We have a primary alcohol, right? Primary alcohol because this carbon to which OH is attached is only attached to any further carbon here, right? So this R group is increasing the electronic density on this carbon. This carbon is increasing the electronic density on oxygen. So the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is becoming stronger. So if a bond is strong, it becomes very difficult to break the bond. If you have a bond that is very strong, you need to break the bond. This means that OH bond will not be able to easily break the bond. Because OH bond will easily break the bond, this means that the donation of this proton is not easy. So acid strength decreases if you attach an electron donating group. So electron donating group is also called electron releasing group. So all alkyl groups, for example, methyl, ethyl, propyl, etc., they all are electron donating group. So we can say that more than number of electron donating groups attached to the OH group, lesser will be the acidity. Right? So acidity strength decreases. So now we have a secondary alcohol here. Right? Because this carbon to which OH is attached, this carbon is further attached to two groups, so this is secondary alcohol. Now two groups are donating the electronic density on this carbon. So what will happen, this OH bond will become more stronger. Okay, so This is a little more stronger than this OH group. So we can say that acid strength of secondary alcohol will be more weaker than the primary alcohol. Now we see it by tertiary alcohol. In case of tertiary alcohol, we have now three alkyl groups which are donating the electronic density. So these electronic density will be much more on this OH group. So it will become very, very hard for the OH to 
break this bond between oxygen and hydrogen so this proton cannot be this hydrogen cannot be donated so the acid strength of the tertiary alcohol is very 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 low as compared to primary and secondary alcohol so this is the order of the acid strength so primary they are more acidic than secondary and tertiary are the least acidic of all so alcohols are weaker acids than water you can say about it so this is an alcohol and this is alcohol and we have removed the proton of alcohol right so when we have removed the proton of alcohol this is called an alkoxide right so for example this is this was previously methyl alcohol or methanol so we have removed the proton we will say it as methoxide right so we have a methoxide here and we have water here right so you know the general reaction but when an acid reacts with the base we get a conjugate acid and a conjugate base right so this base will pick up the proton of this acid so water is acting as an acid here right you know water is amphoteric it can act as an acid as well as base but when we make use of alkoxides water acts as an acid so what happens is that this base will pick up a proton from water right so this will pick up a proton from water it will form an alcohol right so the base previously when it pick up a proton becomes conjugate acid so the alcohol is become conjugate acid and this is the conjugate base so water previously it was acid now it will become base but it will call conjugate base right so water is better in igniting the proton right so water is good acid but alkoxide is a stronger base right so a base which is very stronger its conjugate acid is very weak so you can say that since alkoxide is a very stronger base its conjugate acid that's an alcohol is a very weak acid right so this suggests that alcohols are weaker acids as compared to so we're not comparing animals we, we can say that alcohols are weaker acids because its alkoxide is stronger base right so water is better proton donor it's stronger acid than alcohol right the alkoxide is a better proton acceptor than hydroxide ions which suggests that alkoxide is a stronger basis right so sodium ethoxide is more stronger than sodium hydroxide and since the base is stronger its conjugate acid is weaker therefore the alcohols are weaker as compared to water ah, now we will consider about oh, sorry okay now we will consider about the acidity of phenols right so for that purpose we react the phenol with different metal so you can react the phenol with sodium or aluminum or we may also make use of sodium hydroxide right the hydroxide group in phenol is directly attached to the sp2 hybridized carbon of the benzene ring right so this oxygen will act as electron donating group which so will increase electronic density on the benzene ring because of resonance here so we say that phenol is a very stable molecule because electronic density is circulating all over the ring here right let's go on the next slide okay so when what we do is that when we react sodium hydroxide or sodium or aluminum with a phenol right that indicates that the ion that's formed is very very stable this phenoxide ion is very stable since phenoxide is very stable it will be formed much more so there's a general concept that things that are more stable are formed to more extent so since phenoxide is more stable as compared to phenol here so phenoxide will be formed more you can say that in a phenoxide there is no bond with proton so phenoxide can be only formed when we lose a proton 
So that's simple. You can say that phenols are stronger acid. Why they are stronger acid? Because after losing pradan, the phenoxide ion formed is very very stable. Right? So if you compare this alcohol and with this phenol, you can um, see that in case of alcohol, the alkoxide is not stable. Right? That's why it's not easily losing the proton. While in case of phenols, when phenol leaves, gives up a proton here, it becomes much more stable. So phenols will easily remove a proton. Since they can easily donate a proton, so phenols are much more acidic as compared to alcohols. Okay, now we will consider about which factors increase the acidity of phenols, right? So whenever there is an electron withdrawing group, electron withdrawing groups such as nitro group, right? So we have, if we have an NO2 group attached to the phenol, the acid strength increase, right? Especially the acid strength will be more pronounced, acid strength will be more increased if the electron withdrawing group are ortho or para to each other right and why is that so because the groups which are ortho and para to each other so they are very effective in delocalization of the negative charge on phenoxide so we have a negative charge here so if you want stable a negative charge we have we need to have a positive charge so these electron withdrawing groups generate a positive charge Right? So because of that positive charge, phenoxide is much more stabilized. However, if we have electron with donating groups or electron releasing groups like alkyl groups, right? in such cases, since we already have a negative charge in the form of phenoxide ion, and the electron releasing group also produces negative charge, so negative charge will not stabilize a negative charge. So the presence of electron donating group or electron releasing group will decrease the acid strength. For example, you can say if we have chrysol, you know chrysol, orthochrysol, metachrysol or paracrysol, since we have a electron donating hydroxide group in addition to the hydroxide of the phenol, so sorry, if in chrysols we have a methyl group, so methyls are electron donating. So the electron donating group will increase electronic density on the benzene ring and the phenoxide ion that's formed is also negative charge. So there are two negative charge on the system, so acid strength will decrease. So in general we can say that if we want to increase the acidity of phenol, we have to attach substituents which are electron withdrawing. Right? And if you want to decrease the acid strength, you have to attach substituents which are electron releasing, electron donating. So here we have certain values for pKa. So just remember that if the pKa value is higher, the acid is a weaker one. Right? So higher the pKa value, weaker the acid. Lower the pKa value, stronger will be the acid. So just see the values of pKa. Right? So see, we have orthonitrophenol. You can see. So in case of orthonitrophenol, the pKa value is 7.2. In case of matter, the value is 8.3. So, pK value from metanitro is higher. It means metanitro is a weaker acid. While paranitro, it has pK value of 7.1. You can say that paranitrophenol is stronger acid than orthonitrophenol. Now, we have phenol. So, phenol, in case of phenol, the pK value is 10. Right? In case of orthophenol, just see. The value is 10.2. See, the pK value is increasing, means acid strength is decreasing. Then in case of meta, the value is slightly lower, it's 10.1. In case of para, the value is 10.2, increase, means acid strength is decreasing. And in case of just, we have, in case we have ethanol, that's an alcohol, just compare the pK of alcohol. The pK of alcohol is 15.9. That clearly shows that alcohols are very, very, very weaker acids as compared to phenols. Okay. 
Okay, so that's all for the lecture. I hope you have understood about what were the acidity of phenols, how we can prepare alcohols, or how, can, how we can prepare phenols, how we classify the phenols as monohydric, trihydric, etc. So at part of the quiz for this lecture, you have to arrange the following alcohols and phenols in order of their increasing strength. Right? So we have propanol, propanol, we have 246 trinitrophenol, then we have 3 nitrophenol, 3 5 dinitrophenol, phenol, and 4 methyl phenol. So we have different alcohols and phenols, and your task is that you have to arrange the following compound in order of their increasing strength, and you have to give the justification of why you are suggesting this arrangement. Thank you.